you approach the reading of the word of God any way other than humbly, he will, the devil will twist your mind up. You won't know which way is up. You'll begin to think that you are educated. In fact, you are anything but. There are a great many people who go about deceived and deceiving others. Watch out. You must read the sacred scriptures in, in their entirety. All right, that's number one. Number two, you have to read the scripture within the living tradition of the whole church. Here's where sacred tradition comes into play. You've got to read the sacred scriptures in the light of sacred tradition. What if you don't even acknowledge the existence of sacred tradition? What if you don't believe in that? Well, then you can't exercise that second principle. You're not going to read the scriptures in the light of sacred tradition. And what's going to happen? You're not going to achieve the desired end. You're not going to understand it. You're going to go afield. You're going to deceive others because you yourself are deceived. Now, that may have an impact on your family. If you're a priest, it could have impact on your whole parish. If you're a bishop, it could have impact on your whole diocese. How are we going to read it in the light of tradition if we don't even know what tradition is? You know, how many people made a study of what the fathers, doctors, and saints of the church have had to say about it. One of the first things I did in the beginning of my education in our faith is to read prayerfully and systematically over 500 lives of the saints. And I began to study the writings of the fathers and doctors of the church. I've read thousands and thousands of books. But I've read them in a kind of different way. I've always gone before God and say, Lord, you know who I am, and you know what I am. I am an ignorant man, an arrogant one, prone to error. I can't do this, but you can. I've gone to our mother, the mother of the eternal and incarnate word, Mary, and I've asked her for her help. And she has given it to me. And that is the way to approach this, prayerfully and most of all, humbly. Let me tell you something. Don't you imagine for a moment you're smarter than your enemy, the devil. None of us are. Angelic intelligence. Last weekend I was in Michigan giving a conference on spiritual warfare. Immortal combat, I entitled it. This, this tremendous combat we have. St. Paul talked about it. I didn't make it up. Uh, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, sixth chapter, about spiritual warfare. Uh, we've got spiritual enemies. You approach the reading of the word of God any way other than humbly, he will, the devil will twist your mind up. You won't know which way is up. You'll begin to think that you are educated. In fact, you are anything but. There are a great many people who go about deceived and deceiving others. Watch out. All right. Three principles. Number one, you've got to read the scripture as a totality. Number two, you've got to read it in the light of sacred tradition. And number three, you have to read it applying what's called the analogy of the faith. That harmony which exists between all elements of the faith. 